Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you might be in the world. If you're in the United States, happy Thanksgiving. Hope you're enjoying the weekend. Hope yesterday was a lot of fun, a lot of turkey was eaten, or whatever you whatever you do, however you celebrate it. Hope you had a great one, and then I hope you haven't been spending too much money today. Uh, because, of course, it is Black Friday today, so uh, the sales are well and truly on. My inbox has just been rammed. Uh, every minute is another email, this, that discount and that discount and as i was saying to the guys before we came on i was just like swipe swipe delete 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 cannot be doing with that because i'll end up buying stuff i'll never use anyway i hope you've had a great thanksgiving if you are in the united states and if you're not in the united states well i hope you've had a lovely thursday and a lovely friday so far and um, we've got the weekend coming up lots of uh, good stuff to go through tonight as well um and we've got some very special guests we've got a new newbie as well um so we'll be welcoming them in just a moment but before we do um if you wouldn't mind if you haven't already please do like comment subscribe and share uh, if you know anybody that would really enjoy the show make sure they know about it by sending them the link or sharing it on your social media or climbing on top of the roof and shouting it with a megaphone i don't mind as long as you spread the word um if you haven't already if you're new to the show this may be the first time you've watched us it would be lovely if you could subscribe that way you'll get told about um all of the shows that we do which are generally every friday at the same time however we do occasionally have specials one of which we'll be telling you about just a little bit later so um yeah please do subscribe and hit the bell to get the notifications comment if you will you can do so in the chat which is over there or maybe it's down there wherever you place it um do it in the chat uh, you can comment all the way through the show you can ask questions of us or our guests if you want to ask a question please do stick a big capital q in the front of it and then myself and kent can like identify those and and stick them into a little bucket where we can go in and then pull them out and ask of our guests uh, whatever you need to know um also if you wouldn't mind if you do like the video or you do like the show there's a little like button downstairs. That would be um, very nice if you could press that. Um, we are completely funded by our audience. Thank you ever so much to everyone that has ever donated or that will donate in the future. We love you for doing so. But if you want to do that, you can through either our PayPal link, which you'll find a clickable version in the description below. Um, there is also the Super Chat and Super Stickers, which you'll find in the chat box on YouTube. And if you're watching on Catch Up, where the hell were you for the live show anyway? But there is a button underneath that says thanks if you're watching on catch up. It's not there now, but it's there. So just click that and you can donate as little or as much as you like. We are super grateful for every penny that we get. And um, we're beginning to make plans with what we're going to do with it for next year. And hopefully it'll, it'll yield some um, incredibly fun content for you all. Um, if you want to follow us on our socials, we are on Twitter. We are, well, for now anyway, while Twitter's still going, uh, we're on uh, Instagram. Uh, of course, the main group is on uh, Facebook. So just Google or sorry, search uh, ProSynth Network. Isn't it funny how the word Google now has just kind of entered into the lexicon as the, just the standard word for searching? Um, you can search for us on Facebook. Uh, and of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, which most of you are, um, it's all the same handle at ProSynth Network. Um, and I believe, oh, one more. If you want to buy merchandise, as sported by me here, with just the t-shirts, and um, we've also got polo shirts and hoodies and other things, I think. Um, Viper Graphics are looking after our merchandise at the moment, so visit vipergraphics.co.uk. I'm really sorry to everyone outside the UK. You might have to pay a little bit extra in terms of shipping and stuff. Uh, we, are, we are sort of working towards sorting something else out. But there you go. You can buy these wonderful bits of uh, gear that are sported by the likes of um, Andy Brooks when he goes out live and he plays live, he's always got one of our t-shirts or hoodies on, or sometimes both, because he's that way inclined. So uh, yeah, that'd be great if you could do that. Thank you very much. Right, that's all the boring stuff out of the way. Let's get into our guests. And a little bit later on, we'll be talking about the news topics of the week. But before I do, um, let me bring in my cohort for the night, Mr. Kent Spong. Good evening, how are you? How? Are you well? Good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, still got the uh, the Ensonic perched on the chair there, I see. Yeah, with the uh, Roly Grand perched on top of the EPS. Oh, yes, I can just about see that there. We were Very nice. A big crash later on in the evening. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's a bit dodgy. But anyway, um, mm. I, you're well, yes? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. good. I'm all right, yeah. Good stuff, excellent. Anything interesting passing through your hands this week in mm, need of your tender care? I've got... Uh, one of the GS1s coming back. Oh, God. Knock the walls through. 
yeah, they wheeled it into the studio and um, broke it again. Ugh. Guitarist, mate. I, mean, <laughs> I know. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And any sign of the CS80 that's been lost? Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, well. Nope. Their nothing. problem, not yours. Yeah, they're still looking. <laughs> oh, good to see you, mate. Welcome. Um, Thank you all. Thank you all. Ben's not going to be with us uh, tonight. He's otherwise engaged, and so it's just going to be me and Kent. But don't worry, we've got extras on board. We, we've brought somebody <laughs> off the bench from Cherry Audio before we meet him. Let's go to Cherry Audio's head honcho, Mr. Dan Goldstein. Welcome, sir. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having us back on the show again. Good to see you. Good to see you. Happy Bye. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Um, how has your week been? Because obviously you're here to talk about one thing, and I'm guessing it's been rather busy. Um, it's been a very satisfying and exciting week. It's exhausting between the holiday and the big release. Um, oh, I think we're all just uh, thrilled and tired and ready for a nap. Uh, I don't but blame it's you. been fantastic. It's really Good. been amazing. Excellent stuff. Glad to hear it. Um, let's move across to uh, your colleague, another familiar face on the show. This is the guy that's responsible for the way that Cherry Audio synths look. It's Mr. Mitchell Sigmund. Welcome, sir. Hey, how you doing? I'm very good. Happy Thanksgiving. How are you? Thank you. I am good. Uh, like Dan, I'm sort of glad to have a little bit of a respite <laughs> from this. Um, spent the last week up to this point frantically making the big release video. That right. was my big thing. So cool. just getting that done in time. Yes, <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Well, it was a good one. It was a very good one. So your efforts were were worth it, I shall Thank say. Um, and now, coming off the substitutes bench to fill up that fifth spot. Uh, first time on the show, um, but the, this is Cherry Audios. And I'm, I want to say chief sound designer, lead sound designer. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's Mr. James Terrace. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well. Oh, look at that background as well. It's got some incredible stuff I can see. Mellotrons and all sorts. Yeah, I'll probably get teased by my friends, but this is the only room in the house I have to shoot this stuff. Okay. Well, it's a nice little room you've got there. You've got some uh, spectacular gear. That's not a third wave behind. It is as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. <gasps> what do you think of that? <laughs> um, I know those guys are great friends of mine, and... Um, mm -hmm. I've had it since the beginning, and it's changing daily. Yeah. I have it. Um, there's, I think I'm too OS back right now. Okay. And um, it's just getting better and better. It's tough with these small country companies, um, you know, with trying to get everything out and yeah. they're trying to sell it, but then they also have to please people and keep moving forward on getting it tightened up. And it's yeah. getting, it's, it's a great synth. It sounds awesome. Cool stuff. Um, it's a PPG and way more. I yes guess. yeah so i mean and i'm desperate to get up get my hands on one my friend has just bought one back from the united states uh he's a pilot so he, he gets he gets to uh, stick it in the hole quite easily um but yeah uh looking forward we've had of course we had bob on the show actually a few weeks ago telling yeah. us all about it so yeah it's really cool and andrew maybe uh yes yeah. yeah and also um our, there's a guy in the uh in the chat um Manny Fernandez, aka Doctor Synth, who's a, who's got one as well and is absolutely loving it. So, brilliant yeah, stuff. Well, anyway, welcome to the show, James. You are. Yeah, let, you. let me just um, get your job title. What is your correct job title? Did I get it right? Uh, you know, I'm kind of more of a freelance sound designer. And, oh, okay. Um, I met Dan through um, Mitchell quite a few years ago, and when mm -hmm. they decided to do Cherry, uh, they asked me if I wanted to be involved, and it started out really casually. You know, mm -hmm. just making a few presets. I was the only guy making presets and eventually I just said, you know, to step this up, we have to have more than just me. For one, it's exhausting and two, it's just, we need a diverse group of people to bring a lot of different mm. sounds and styles to the table. And so I proposed maybe doing more of a curation where I hire friends or sound designers okay. and um, bring them in as, you know, special collections or just to assist. And it's been great. I think that was a good move. Mm, definitely definitely well look welcome to the show we're gonna we'll ask you some more specific questions about your role within the the new instrument that we're all going to talk about just uh, just now because it is a big deal um so guys uh, i think the the first thing we should do is uh, i guess everybody kind of knows what you guys put out uh, just a few days ago but let's just remind everyone uh, in the chat and watching the show uh, exactly what it was that uh, that got shared so let's do this um, Put this on the screen 
Here we go. In 1973, the most technologically advanced polyphonic synthesizer ever conceived was released, featuring groundbreaking advances in polyphony, velocity, and aftertouch sensitivity, along with four ranks of incredible sound quality. The GX1 was a quantum leap forward from its contemporaries. Four years later, in 1977, the CS80 was released. A more compact and affordable version, it offered the same basic voicing architecture and innovative real-time performance control capabilities as the GX1. The CS80 was embraced by music professionals including Paul McCartney, Eddie Jobson, Hans Zimmer and Vangelis who famously made use of its highly expressive real-time performance capabilities in Ridley Scott's 1982 sci-fi classic Blade Runner. These days, their rarity and exorbitant cost has made it impossible for musicians to experience these legendary instruments. That is, until now. That is until now. It's the GX80, everyone. What a brilliant uh, introduction video there. Um, narrated by Tim Shoebridge, nonetheless, of uh, Sand Mangling. Go and check his channel out. Um, there's lots of good stuff on there. Um, GX80, guys. I mean, come on. What the hell? What were you thinking? So tell me, I mean, tell me what you were thinking. What was the germ? What was the seed that said, I mean, did you always want to do a CS80? And then when did it come to pass that you thought, hey, well, we'll throw a GX1 in there for good measure. Where did it all begin? Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting story. So the process began more than a year ago. Uh, the, the CS80 was the most requested product from our customers. They'd write mm -hmm. to us on... Facebook and on our forums and they'd write to our customer support and they would say, Hey, you guys should do a CS80. And we, um, we, we like the idea, but we, we also know that there are CS80s on the market and we weren't really sure what to do. Um, our friend, Mark Barton became really, uh, a DSP. He's a phenomenal DSP engineer that we work with and he became uh just obsessed with studying the schematics of the cs80 i don't know if you guys have ever seen a cs80 service manual but it's just it's pages and pages and pages of schematics mm. and circuit diagrams there's so much inside a cs80 it's just so technically dense and uh and you know mark barton reads schematics the way most of us read novels he just <laughs> he just read every bit of it and, and became obsessed with how it worked and then started uh, looking at and studying the schematics of the GX1 to see the origin of it all. And one day he called me up and said, I know what we should do. We shouldn't just do a CS80. We should do all the features of the GX1 that were removed from the CS80 when they scaled it down. And we all sort of instantly... I called Mitchell and said, "Hey, you got to hear this." And we and we talked to James and just everyone was, "Yeah, let's do that." It the moment we heard the idea, we knew that's the that's the product, that's what everybody wants. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do. Cuz there hasn't really been I mean, like you said that there's some CSAT uh cloned plugins such as, you know, those from uh, Arturian, there's uh, Memory Man, is that correct? I can't remember that's the name. Memory. But there, there's a few out there um and so it wasn't like that. that hadn't been done before but the gx1 to my knowledge i don't believe there's a gx1 plug-in i know that there are some sample libraries and some instruments that have samples of gx1s in but never a, never a, an actual gx1 and that's always been sort of a dream of many people certainly me to to get my hands on that sort of thing um from a design perspective mitchell you, yes. you you've now got these two behemoths shall we say of yamaha's you know classic 70s era of analog synths there's a lot of stuff on each of those machines there's mm -hmm. loads of buttons loads of uh, uh faders and switches and all sorts of things how did you approach the design of merging these two things together you know what did you come up with to sort of help people get around the synth in a fairly intuitive way well there were two factors first of all i had as is usually the case, I start designing things way before I ever should. 
and, all, <laughs> and some of the time we don't even end up making them, but I always just get excited and, mm. and start designing things. So I already had um, some CS80 art that I was working on, so I was already moving in that direction um, when we made the decision to incorporate the GX. But the thing that sort of, in a way, was lucky for me was that the GX1, if you're not familiar with it, has almost no actual sound parameter mm. on the front of it. It's basically a preset organ in, in that sense. Um, so the way you program sounds on a GX1 is there's actually a separate programmer unit that has all the parameters on it, and I won't, unless you really want me to, I won't explain how <laughs> it works because it's so arcane and crazy and ridiculous. It's sort of like how a CS80 does presets, but it's even more ridiculous. Right. So it, it entails separate boxes. So what that meant was, I knew that there was no point in trying to do the artwork to look like a GX1 because there's no sound programming on it anyway. Mm. It's just a bunch of preset buttons, then all the controls for sort of, you know, how the pedals work and that kind of thing. Yeah. So it made sense to keep it looking like a CS80, and then we had to decide, okay, well, we'll just incorporate the extra features. It was challenging, even though to look at it, it might not seem like much, but it was really challenging figuring out a way to incorporate all the extra oscillator features in a mm -hmm. way that made sense. And so I just added the extra controls to the, the CS80 vibe. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we argued over what color those sliders should be for three months, <laughs> <laughs> basically. Yeah, because um, one of the big uh, differences between the GX1 and the CS80, other than you know, there's there's been stuff removed from the GX1, um, was the GX1 had four voice ranks and the CS80 sure. had two. So you've actually come up with a fairly ingenious way of facilitating that within within the UI of, of GX80. Right. I mean, it would have been really, really neat to have all of them simultaneously available, but it would have made for an enormous UI. And you just, there's no way we could have done that without you know, making a ridiculous scent. Mm. Um, so it became clear, especially since we had experience with doing this kind of double layer thing from the Elka that we had just done, uh, the Elka X. Um, so we just decided to make a dual layer kind of thing where it completely switched to the second set of controls. Mm. And then the challenge was, okay, we got to make it clear that you're on the top layer or the bottom layer. Um, so we came up with a couple of visual cues, and again, there was a lot of back and forth to arrive at it, but I think we came up with a pretty elegant solution. Mm. Yeah. Um, so we have a number of things, the, the ones and twos, the Roman numerals for the ranks all change yep. to threes and fours, the outlines go from white to orange, etc. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's pretty intuitive, I have to say. Yep. So that's the design. That's how it kind of came to be. And of course, you know, the, the, the most important thing about this, uh, not you know, to, to belittle anyone else's work, is of course how it sounds. And GX80 has over 1,000 pre presets built in in the box. Uh, so James, tell us how you went about you know, starting to curate these libraries. Uh, there's obviously a lot of, um, you've got a lot of people on board, lots of, lots of names in the in the category lists there but did you set these people uh, any limitations did you say please don't overdo the vangelis type sounds or did you say let's have loads of vangelis type sounds yeah what what was the criteria well i knew there were going to be a ton of those <laughs> vangelis sounds and um so i tried to choose people that appreciated more of a raw sound like matia inhalt um you know matia mm -hmm. simovich he likes a real more of a pure less effects kind of thing and um with sequential we both worked with sequential and dave would say like you know maybe just so many effects and you know get them ready if you want them to to work set them up so you can engage them but we really appreciate not having that many effects mm -hmm. and so I, I definitely chose wisely or tried to uh, you know some folks that didn't over embellish or get too crazy because i knew we'd have plenty of that and you know, there's James Dyson that goes mm -hmm. insane with everything, and then there's, you know, uh, Dave Pulich, which keeps it a little more old school and, and pure. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to like, I'm all over the place, you know. <laughs> I try to just make it really diverse. I do all the factory, you know, like the GX80 presets are mine mostly. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a big deal setting up um, a thousand presets. Yeah, and lining people up, making sure they're available, 
having some redundancy or backup to know that like if someone you know Julian Pollock uh, J3PO he mm -hmm. had a baby so that right. it wasn't prime time for him so he dropped yeah. off and uh, we added Drew Schlesinger so these are well if you're gonna yeah you know, if you're gonna fill I'm some boots lucky. I'm very lucky to have acquired them <laughs> yeah absolutely um did you set out to recreate the presets from the originals um as accurately as possible you know the, obviously the the GX1 was was a preset machine did you go through and, and you know create all of those as well as the CS80 ones or did you really focus more on you know what what other people could interpret you know from these things? I kind of my personally I went forward and just I'm not a real technical guy when it comes to students I've learned so much um, working with these plugins it's kind of like a flight simulator you know you like you get in there and you learn it really well and you step to up to the real machine and you kind of know where you're, where you're going with it I just kind of throw paint on the wall and, and run with it in more of a from the heart kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Some people are more real, you know, they're systematic and they go, I'm going to make this sound, do this. Um, those tone banks were created by Mitchell. Um, they had two uh, CS80s in Las Vegas. Okay. I went out a couple of weeks back and kind of played around and didn't do a whole lot at that <laughs> point, um, but have fun. Uh, I guess to answer your question, uh, I just kind of did more modern stuff or whatever came to mind. Drew um, said that he wanted to kind of do more GX stuff because mm -hmm. we kind of feel like maybe that was the weakest part. Not any, you know, m nobody's played a real GX one or not many people have. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's an old school guy. He's been around forever and he's super knowledgeable. I, I was glad that he, he kind of proposed that and he had uh, quite a few uh, GX presets in his. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Drew's a, Drew's a bit of a legend in the sound design department. Um, Great guy. Yeah, absolutely. We've had him on the show. He's he's really really cool. Um, so back to you, Dan. Um, the intricacies and the trials and tribulations of modelling. One of the most popular demanded synthesizers, certainly as far as you were concerned, but as in the, in the wider thing, yeah, you know, the CS eighty has godlike status amongst us synth nerds, and the GX one is almost you know the god of gods because it's just such a mythical thing that so many people you know you see it and you're just wowed by the look of it and then you hear it and it's just it's, you know an amazing thing how did you go about recreating um those machines from a technical level what were you doing in terms of modeling original hardware you mentioned schematics earlier as well we were very fortunate as james said because we had access to two cs80s i have a cs80 behind me you can't see it because it's blocked by uh jupiter six at the moment but there's a cs80 in my studio uh that's a pristine 1978 model and then uh our friend martin who just lives a couple miles down the street from me he has a cs80 that he meticulously restored over the course of a two-year period of time right. so we had access to two really nice machines and we've done a fair bit of modeling of synths, so we have a pretty good strategy for how we go about this um, but I can tell you that a lot of what we thought a CS80 was and how we imagined it worked uh, was wrong and sort of went out the window. A lot of our techniques for how we do this went out the window because a CS80 is so much more complex internally than we ever imagined it is. So for example, just to explain what I mean, the filter of a CS80, the, the high pass and the low pass filter, these are Yamaha filter chips. And each of these chips has eight different control voltages going into the chips to determine what the filter cutoff will be. It's not a single CV that gets summed together like in every other synthesizer. It's eight separate control voltages. And then each of those control voltages affects the filter in a different way. Hmm. So you have keyboard CV as you play up the keyboard that opens the high pass and the low pass filter simultaneously but in different amounts and the envelope uh the filter envelope does the same thing it affects both high pass and low pass filters but in different ratios and so just uh just up and down the line throughout the instrument there were surprises and mysteries and things we had to understand <laughs> uh and it was so much more work than any instrument we've ever done and unlike any product we've done, 
Um, with all of our other products, we don't release it until it's ready. We, we don't really have a firm date when the product is going to be done. We finish it and we test it and we put it through QA and we do sound design on it. And when everyone feels good about it, we release the instrument. But we really wanted to have GX80 ready for Black Friday and the holiday season. And mm -hmm. so we just had this deadline that, that kept getting closer and closer and closer. And there was <laughs> so much work to do. Uh, and everyone, Mitchell and James, but everyone at Cherry Audio stepped up to make this happen. And there were many times when we weren't so sure it was going to, <laughs> but it came together and we just we could not be happier with it. Yeah. It's so close to the hardware um, that you can be in the same room and play with your eyes closed and not be able to tell which instrument is which. And that's not an easy thing to do with the no, CSD. Not at all. And, and I guess, you know, you're, you're up against those problems that you've you've mentioned in the past where, you know, you've, you've had two CS80s that you were tinkering with and using as, as benchmarks. But I guess those two CS80s weren't, you know, obviously matched identically. They, they had their own variances. So you're, I guess you're sort of searching for a, a, a middle ground. That was a that was particularly evident more so I think than any synth we've played where you can push multiple keys and on a CS80 of course every voice is its own card it's mm. its own voice card and they can all be calibrated differently the envelopes on those cards can be calibrated differently the filters the volume of the individual notes can be different and then from machine to machine um, the ranges of controls could be wildly different and we had to find we had to between my machine and martin's machine and the yamaha specs uh for how the machine should be calibrated we had to figure out what gave us the widest range and the the best sound and could recreate every sound from both of the machines that we had mm. and um yeah, and some of those compromises were were not easy to make. Uh, for example, my for whatever reason, my ring modulator on my CS80 uh, is calibrated in such a way where some of the clean signal is mixed in with the ring modulated signal. Mm -hmm. um, but we're pretty sure from the calibration process that that's not the way a proper CS80 should be. <laughs> so. Part of the challenge was figuring out which of which aspects of our machines were just not working right the yeah. way they're supposed to work, and um, yeah, it's just so complicated, very very complex. Yeah, I don't envy. But of course, we have to address the elephant in the room. I, so I don't mean to call you an elephant, Kent, because you're not. I mean it's just the microphone oh. that makes you look like you've got a large nose. Um, but of course, our very just own Kent give Spong, me a ban. <laughs> our very own Kent Spong, um, is uh, widely regarded by most as the the premier restorer and fixer upper of CS eighties. And um, I think, I've got, have, do you know how many you've actually had passed through the it's KSR establishment? Just a tad over five hundred and seventy. Really? Wow. Is, is that an yeah. actual figure? Yeah, it, well, it, it's wow. over 100. It's over, we know it's over 570. Wow. That's amazing. Well, it could be 571 if that one that's lost in the post turned up. Yeah, <laughs> so, listen, I mean, you, I, I guess you're appreciating everything that these guys are saying in terms of the technicalities and the, um, yeah. you know, the, the, the problems they we're encountering. Um, how are you, you know, how are you finding it? And Well, it... it <sighs> It's like if, if you compare um, Arturia's one uh, ME80 by Memory Moon, and now obviously GX80's one as well, and they will all sound different. But there, then again, CS80's will sound different. Yeah. The real worry is um, in the service manual. There's quite a few mistakes. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's another thing. That's very yeah, now. True. And, and here's the one, and it, I think it's caught out a lot of people, but when, because um, when, when you analyze the card um, for the, the control board, which is coming into the filter um, and, and how the exponential amplifiers work in conjunction with that, which is a nightmare, because you've got <laughs> so, some linear pots, you've got some uh, logarithmic pots, but the, there's a mistake where you have the trigger cards, and so there's an exponential amp or 
every function to each voice. And uh, a, a common mistake is that when they're calibrated, um, a tech will calibrate it, you know, turn it on, let it warm up, and then calibrate these cards. But it has to be set to front panel mode, and they normally have it left on strings one and two as it boots up right. in its natural mode. And that makes all the presets sound wrong. Right. And on, so, um, you're not here. And yeah. um, so, because there's there's problems with uh, all of th all of them <laughs> in compared to an actual calibrated eighty. Mm. You can make up for it, obviously, because you have the the controls there to mess around with that. Um, and that is the problem because it is such a complex machine. You have to constantly keep having to revisit it. Yeah. You know. Um, so. It's weird because they all sound like CS80. Yeah. No problem. There's no two. They all sound like CS80, but they're all actually slightly different than each other. So it's actually getting to the point where you go, I like the sound of that that particular software or that particular software, mm. depending on what it is you want to do. Yeah. So, but no, I haven't seen any that got this many patches available. It's ridiculous. It is. <laughs> so many patches in it, and it's, <laughs> so, and it's so eclectic. It's so it's so yeah. everywhere. You can do all different types of stuff with it. It's really good. It's really yeah. good. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we have some questions that have been coming in, so let me just throw some of these at uh, you guys. First of all, I just want to mention um, Andrew Brooks, who is uh, one of our moderators in the chat. Thank you ever so much for your work, as always, and thanks for posting the links up um, into the chat so people can click on those. They will appear in the uh, the de description after the show. But he wants to um, uh, he wants to hear. Uh, I think it's, <laughs> Dan or James, because I think you both got Mellotrons, but he'd love to hear Strawberry Fields. I know that's probably not an easy thing, you know, to, to set up, but maybe next time, maybe you can give us <laughs> give us give us a demo on that. Um, thank you for your donation, as anyway. It, look, he works for us and then he pays us. I mean, that's the kind <laughs> that's the, the kind of stuff you want. I'm probably the only one who can play it, and I don't have a Mellotron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can play it. Let's ah! let's figure this out. I've got right, a excellent. <laughs> Thank these, you so much, um, Andrew, for these that. Digital Mellotrons make wonderful polyphonic aftertouch controllers. Oh, there you go. That's what I'm using it for. Well, I've, I've, I was using. Um, we'll, we'll have a little chat about that because we, we have a funny story. Um, <laughs> but I, the only polyphonic um, aftertouch keyboard I've got is the Arturia Micro Freak, which is that very, you know, it's the touch keyboard, but it does have poly aftertouch. And so I've been able to, you know, experience, you know, GX80 in its full kind of poly aftertouch glory, which was um, is really nice to do. But I must, I must get something a bit more substantial because it's a little bit disconcerting, just pressing on solid things. <laughs> well, it's funny you should say it because that's what Kent's got next to him, haven't you? Got something? You got an Ensonic? Yeah, I've got EP the EPS 16. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't work that great, actually. Uh, no. Maybe because mine's old, but yeah, the poly aftertouch is kind of wonky on it. So yeah. Um, but there was another question in here from David Lee. Let me just bring this up on the screen. Um, the GX80 default filter seems very bright, even without the GX1 filter selected. Uh, you can uh, adjust the filter to sound great, but curious why it seems so bright. Have you got any response to that at all? Who wants Damn. to take that one? You want to take it? Or want me to take it? Um, well, there's nothing particularly bright about a filter when it's opened up. It just lets the raw waveforms through. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a, uh, it's not, I mean, CS80 has a very characteristic filter to it. And it's not a Moog style four pole filter, mm -hmm. but it's just the sound of it. Okay. I mean, there's also the fact that a CS80 inherently has many things modding the filter cutoffs at all times, so it's very easy to end up with a pile of things pushing the, the cutoff frequencies mm -hmm. upward. And not only would that make your low pass get brighter and brighter, it also, at the same time, will be modding the high pass. Mm -hmm. So the high pass frequency gets higher, so you lose low end as mm -hmm. it gets you know, more mod. Um, so it will get thinner and brighter and seem bright <laughs> yeah okay. and that's very characteristic of the cs80 sound unlike other synthesizers you can't disconnect keyboard cv from the filters mm -hmm. they always track the filter uh or i should say the filters always track the keyboard and, and there's nothing you can do about that mm -hmm. and it's just part of the character uh, the tone actually changes like mitchell said as you play higher up the keyboard everything you play is more high passed right. no matter 
whether you want that or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, JP Page 2 in the chat, this isn't a question, just wants to say congratulations. This is the first VST in two years that he finds to be a must-have. He will be picking it up in great price too. So the, and I'm, I'm hearing comments like that you know, ever since it came out. Lots and lots of positive stuff uh, coming from that. So uh, thank you for that, uh, JP. And uh, another question here from our resident uh, nerd in the room, Wagyu, uh, over in Switzerland there. Nice donation of 10 Swiss chuffs. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, which elements did you find most critical to circuit model for this one? And did you consider going to somewhere like RMV in Stockholm to AB with the ABBA GX1 during the process? Uh, we had to do more circuit modeling in GX80 than we've ever had to do before. There, because again, there are there's so much circuitry in a GX80 that affects how the instrument works and how it sounds. One of just one example that that really surprised us was the velocity and the aftertouch actually interact in a really interesting way. Um, and those signals at some point are actually combined together and then separated from each other later on. Uh, and I don't entirely understand the circuitry for that, but Mark Barton, the only way we could get it to react exactly like the hardware was to just go in and model exactly what's happening mm -hmm. to get that behavior. Um, we did modeling just throughout this instrument down to the expression pedal. The expression pedal on a CS80 is an optical circuit. It's got a little light bulb in it and a little sensor. And as you move the pedal, the bulb gets brighter and dimmer. <laughs> and so if you if you lower the expression pedal all the way, the bulb doesn't instantaneously turn off, it dims. And so there's a fade out to it and a fade in when you turn the pedal up. And um, just every aspect of that, just getting everything right is what took months and months and months of work because the thing is just everywhere you look on this instrument, there are capacitors that are used to fade in changes to things like aftertouch. And we wanted to model all of it. We wanted to get all of it right. As far as the GX1, um, we did not consider going to Stockholm, but thankfully we had our friends at EMIAP in Philadelphia oh, of course, yeah. that have a GX1 and our friend Michael Whalen, who played that GX1 mm -hmm. recently at a concert. And uh, we were able to run everything we did by them and get their approval that cool. everything's correct and working the way it's supposed to. And that was really helpful. Nice. Good stuff. Well, hopefully that's answered that question. Uh, another donation. Whoops, not that one, this one. Uh, from Andy Synth Addict, thanks to the Cherry Audio guys for the great tools. I've bought them all and was cool chatting with uh, Dan at Synthplex. So there you go. Um, thank you for your donation. You. That was fun. We, we got to hang out and talk a little bit. Uh, well, I, I, I saw you on the side of the frame when Andy was um, live streaming Tom Oberheim. Uh, when he was yeah. home and you were just over there to the right and I'm going, ah, it's dad. I was, <laughs> I was picking out all these people that I knew that was really great. And I was, I was jealous. very lucky. I had a plane to catch shortly after that. Oh, and man. I wanted to uh, check out the synth museum one more time before I went to the airport. And I just yeah. was in the right place at the right time. When Tom Oberheim came in, it was awesome. That was a, a, a wonderful experience. Uh, that, that was amazing. Nice. So um, I've got another question from Wagyu, but I'm going to kind of, uh, a little bit before it so um obviously the cs80 and the gx1 have um lots of expression built into them so you know the cs80 obviously with the polyphonic aftertouch um the gx1 i think on the top manual has that kind of you know you can move the keys from side to side there's the ribbon strip so expression is a really big part of what both of these instruments are all about now you've um, not only have you incorporated poly after touch um, uh, in there, you've also gone with um, last note after touch for those people who don't have that. So that's a great boon because I know that when Arturia added that to their poly brute, it just turned the synthesizer into something so much more expressive than it already was, which was was pretty expressive. Um, the, the ribbon strip, obviously, that works maybe not as, the same way as other ribbon strips because basically zero is wherever you put the your finger for the first time and right. then it goes all the way down to zero to the left and then up to an octave to the right or something. So there's lots of nuance in there and I just wanted to kind of know 
um from from all of you really from a design perspective how did you you know come around to incorporating all that in from a sound design perspective how much uh, of that was um at the forefront of your minds designing the sounds and also to come to wagyu's question i, I can recap this because there's a lot of stuff here but he was he was wondering about mpe support because obviously that's now the the buzzword in terms of expression so um can you know can you all speak to you know the levels of expression that these instruments give you and how you went about attaining that and is there any plans uh you know in the future for mpe support james you want to take that um i know with elka x you decided not to do mpe because of the dual layer thing was that why i, I didn't want to ask about that oh i can I, I can speak to mpe yeah certainly. were you, asking you might about want to talk the about controller? the expressiveness of um when it, it was kind of nice. Uh, Mark Barton wrote up a document for the sound designers about what's unique about the CS80. And I know that for several of the sound designers, that was a really helpful thing because to really sound like a CS80, you really want to take advantage of all these, not, not just velocity, not just aftertouch. You have the keyboard control a uh, section that lets you boost the volume of the top two or the bottom two octaves or reduce the volume. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of different ways that you can use velocity and it's extremely sensitive to velocity. And then aftertouch can do all sorts of really cool things. And that's a big part of what separates the CS80 from other synths. So um, I know James, again, you can speak to this. Yeah, but I, I can go into that. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just misunderstood. Um, so starting with the ribbon, I was a little reluctant to put like a true CS80 ribbon because you have the semi and you have, you know, the the CS80's behavior. Um, I kept that behavior on like more of the Vangelis stuff or the, um, the big lush pads uh, for the more useful like lead things and stuff like that. I kept it on semi mode. Um, I did see a guy who had like a, a surface, so he was able to touch the screen, and that's that's cool. I don't have anything like that. I have an iPad, but there's no iOS for this, obviously. Um, so that's the answer, I guess, for that. As far as all the expression goes, I told the, the sound designers, like, please program this thing with um, a 61 key controller with at least aftertouch, mm -hmm. and because it's so important, especially with the way it kind of scoops or curves those key tracking of um, level and um, filter, uh, you know, it's so expressive. And often you find when you get on the high end, um, it's out of control and you can attenuate the curve or the high end. Um, you know, in the center, I find there's kind of a dead spot. And I don't particularly know how many notes um, that is, but you know, it doesn't do much in the center. And as you change the brilliance of high and low in the um, initial or level of high and low, it kind of can raise or lower or attenuate the, the notes in either direction. And you need a big controller to do this. Um, you, you know, I use a little a little key step most mm -hmm. of the time. And maybe I would get the, the patches of presets set up that way, but I'd always shift over to my big controller um, to double check the, the you know, aftertouch and all that, that um, was working and expressive as intended. Yeah. And that last note, um, aftertouch kind of like the fake poly aftertouch is brilliant mm. um it's it takes to get a bit to get used to it but it's about as good as it's going to get um yeah. if you don't have poly aftertouch which i don't have yeah. a, unfortunately i don't have one well i mean is we, we've said this repeatedly on the show in the last few years since you know hydrosynth uh, and asm brought back in poly aftertouch into a mainstream and such a, a hugely successful instrument that now we're talking about poly aftertouch uh, in the way that I think we've always we should have always been talking about it. That when instruments don't have it, we should be kicking up a fuss, not the other way around, which seemed to be the case a few years ago. You know, people were saying, "Oh, poly after who needs that?" <laughs> and you know, a lot of us thought quite differently. And it's just lovely to see that it's there. Um, will Will you ever think about putting MPE into to this and maybe other instruments where the architecture of that instrument lends itself to that is that something we have you... we have mpe support in many of our instruments mm -hmm. it, okay. it's just a question of whether the architecture 
is right. And an instrument that's splittable across the keyboard or can be layered um, with different levels of polyphony on each layer or different levels of polyphony on each split, it, it doesn't really lend itself to the concept of MPE very well. Um, pitch bending on a CS80, because the oscillators are linear tracking, um, the whole MPE idea of gliding from note to note doesn't, it's just not really compatible with the CS80. You know, as you know, with the, the ribbon controller, if you bend down all the way, everything stops. Yeah. You bend all the way down to zero hertz. Um, so there's just all kinds of reasons why, uh, plus mapping pressure to anything other than aftertouch isn't really what this instrument's about. Mm -hmm. Now, the good news is you can use an MPE controller uh, and you can play uh, just via MIDI, you can play GX80, including aftertouch, mono aftertouch, I think, on, mm -hmm. on, uh, and it's still perfectly expressive and perfectly musical. It's just not really an MPE compatible instrument, at sure. least not if we're keeping it true to what a CS80 is. Yeah. And Mitchell, how about um, the you know building these kind of things into the the design of the instrument? You know, because you've got all this expression there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a fairly large amount of it was just inherent to the design. If I was going to, you know, emulate the existing design, um, I think you know I didn't really add too much. I didn't need to add very much. Um, the uh, the one thing I did want to mention though, which it seems to get overlooked a little bit is on the real one, a huge part of the expressiveness of it is those paddles, right? We call mm -hmm. them paddles, those, and if you haven't used a, a real CS80, they're, they're levers, but they kind of travel in an arc. I should be yeah. doing it like this, right? <laughs> and that's carried over from some of the Yamaha organs, and they work backwards from yeah. how you're used to it. As you pull them backwards, they, they engage more. So um, obviously James really couldn't build that into the presets because we don't know um, <laughs> you know, we don't know what kind of controller you're using, but if you have a controller that has, you know, your standard kind of, I'm looking at my Arteria here, um, has like the nine faders kind of thing, yeah. it's really, really easy, and I think we forget that everybody isn't familiar with necessarily how MIDI Assign works on Cherry Instruments, but on all the Cherry Instruments, it's exceptionally easy to assign MIDI controllers. Mm -hmm. So you can put it, you can click the MIDI tab at the top and put it in learn mode, and uh, and then you can just click on every control that you want to assign. You click on the control, move the controller, click on another control, move the controller. So it's very easy to assign many controllers, mm -hmm. uh, hardware controllers. And also it's very easy to set the ranges and invert them if you want to. So that way they can they can get more as you pull them back, like the real thing, or they can mm -hmm. work the other way. Okay. Um, so once you've set up a lot of those controllers, the expressiveness then combined with all the existing things that, that Dan and James were talking about, the the uh, key ranges and the you know velocity aftertouch, just goes through the roof and it really becomes much like the experience of playing a real one, especially when you get that ring modulator on a couple of faders. It, it's just awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got some other comments. Let me just bring these in. So uh, David Lee says uh, GX80 is the best CS80 VST since ME80 and is now his favorite overall because uh, he thinks it sounds and feels better. And he also says that uh, he can't live with that poly aftertouch. Once you have it, you, you never not want to have it. Um, and I can attest to that. It really is. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, Steve Elbows making the funnies in the chat. A being an ABBA is too confusing. Would cause a shortage of A's and B's across the globe. <laughs> we I actually... That, that oh, one deserves... Yes, there we go. There you go. By complete coincidence, while we were developing this, a friend of mine who is, does some pretty heavy-duty gigs sent me photos... He had no idea we were working on this at all. He sent me photos of him and his partner, who is also an amazing keyboard player, um, of them at Benny Anderson's studio, like wow. with the GX1. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and so uh, I snuck a portion of some of the photos they sent me into the promo video. But nice. um, but we didn't want to necessarily hit up. I was like, hey, can you ask Benny from Ava? Because we're doing this thing. And I'm sure he, oh, yeah. you know. So that, that would be an endorsement and a half. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, Bertrand in the chat uh, says, "What keyboard controller did you use to test the GX80 with the ribbon? Do you, do you can you guys tell us what you were using?" 
Uh, I've got an elite <laughs> Andromeda with a ribbon. Okay, um, yeah. But, uh, you know, the challenge with the ribbon was not really testing it with a ribbon. The, the challenge with the ribbon was figuring out how to make it respond to the pitch bend wheel mm -hmm. because the CS80 ribbon is so weirdly different than using a, a pitch bend wheel on a on most controllers um to get the full range of of a cs80 ribbon you have to start at the extremes wherever you put your finger down on the ribbon is the zero point yeah and so if you touch it halfway and move all the way up and all the way down you only get half the range and of course you want the entire range if you're using a, a pitch bend wheel mm -hmm. so that became that became sort of challenging there's also I'm not sure most people know this, but a CS80 also has a separate pitch bend uh, knob yeah. on its far left side. It's kind of this oversized knob and <laughs> inset inside of it is a master tuning control. And that knob is really unusual in and of itself because it bends up, I think, a seventh or, or at least seven semitones and it bends down four semitones, which either way brings you to a fifth. The, you know, the fifth of the chord. So if you're playing a C, it'll bend up to a G or down to a G. And um, and so again, when you move that pitch bend wheel on your keyboard, what do you expect to happen? Do you expect the ribbon to move? Do you expect the pitch bend wheel to move? And in the end, we got rid of the pitch bend wheel that I think most people don't even know exists on a CS80. And we incorporated both kinds of bending into the ribbon. So you have both linear bending or uh, sort of standard semitone bending, if that's what you prefer. OK, yeah. Because um, there was another question from Richard in the chat, which was kind of related to that. Um, he's not managed to control the ribbon controller via MIDI yet. Um, can you give any tips or do you know if there's any you know, like YouTube videos that might be able to help him get started with that as a control? people have been trying to map it to midi sliders and things like that and again it, it's not that kind of control um because the actual ribbon depends where you touch it and where you let go of it which doesn't really fit into a midi cc controller where you don't really know when they've touched it and when, when they've let go of it yeah. so it's just standard pitch bend it responds to to the pitch bend wheel of any midi controller right in a really okay. intuitive way i think yeah, yeah. I know some people um, have been using um, other things. You know, you know, Mitchell held up his mouse. Um, <laughs> people are using touch elements, you know, on yeah. uh, on slates and stuff. So um, I, I guess it's just whatever works for you best, really. Um, so we've got about sort of five or ten minutes left with you guys um, before we let you get back to your Thanksgiving celebrations. There was another question that Wagyu always pays for his questions. We love him because of that. And they're always good questions as well. Um, thanks for the answers, Cherry Chaps. Uh, just bought Synth Stack 3 to hoover up the rest of your stuff. And that was what I wanted to come on to um, before we sort of close things out. Um, you just released at the same time as, uh, as GX80 this big collection which you're calling synth stack three which is is it most or all of your stuff put together you know what what's in what can people expect to to get for that it's all of our instruments it's 16 different instruments including our voltage modular core modular synthesizer which is an enormous package by itself uh and then 15 synths that we've done uh since 2020 everything in there uh at essentially half price and if you already own any cherry audio products you receive a personalized discounted yes. price based on what you own uh and and i'll tell you what really sort of warms all of our hearts uh is the moment gx80 came out and gx80 is 59 dollars yeah. There were a whole lot of people that went and bought Synth Stack 3, and they paid about $30 for Synth Stack 3. And the, re the reason why is they already owned everything that we made <laughs> except for GX80, so they were able to buy GX80 at, for half off. Yes. And it is such an honor. It's so incredible to have customers that are willing to buy everything that we make uh, and it just it, it it amazes us that that happens all these synths all these projects that we do can be so different and we don't expect every synth to be for everyone mm. um but there are we just have some of the most loyal customers and it means so much to us it really does 
Yeah. Um, there's a, a see Wagyu is, he's doing it again um, so he's come up with this really great tip really great shopping tip if you go and buy something from Plugin Boutique right now um, you get CA2600 I believe for free once yeah. you've got that then go back and uh, get your, cher- your your super stack uh, price and it'll have that you know discounted as well so it's even better it's yeah there you go. So go and buy go and buy something from Plugin Beauty. Get that, and you get a little bit more off as well. It's a fantastic there deal. <laughs> it really is. Really. Oh, I don't want to do you guys out of your hard earned cash, but that's a great thing. Uh, this is Black Friday after all. Let's, let's encourage those things. It sure is. So um, I guess I mean I know what the the original answer is going to be to this, but you know you you came out of you know out of nowhere with this one. Um, now you're in Thanksgiving. It's it's the holiday season. I guess you guys deserve a rest more than many others. Big plans for 2023? Anything you can hint at? Maybe when we might be able to see something new? Well, we we oh. can't we can't hint at anything, but we have I, every time I try. I know I, it's fair yes. enough. We are at the moment. I can tell you that all of us are taking a long weekend to just just enjoy ourselves before we start working on more uh instruments but we are always as as mitchell pointed out earlier in this discussion um he's designing instruments so far ahead i mean he's designing things that won't come out until 2024 at this point um we have a lot of really cool things (laughs) planned we can't talk about it but i promise everyone that Whatever you think our next synth will be, you're probably wrong. It's not it. Yeah. <laughs> not going to be it. So yeah. our, our resident FM expert, uh, Dr. Manny Fernandez, a.k.a. Uh, Dr. Synth, says, tell the CA guys, signs is cool. They need to do a dedicated advanced FM synth. So I guess Mitchell's the guy we need to get drunk uh, at a Christmas <laughs> party. Isn't it? I, I, have, I don't know if Manny remembers me because I, I used to work at SoundSource, uh, well, it was SoundSource Interactive, but it was SoundSource Unlimited, Unlimited back in the yeah. 90s. And I used to sell his sounds. And actually, a few of the sound designers who worked for that company uh, now are working for us. Uh, Drew uh, did yeah, sounds course, for SoundSource. Drew, yeah. And uh, so did, uh, uh, who else? James? I honestly don't uh, know. Maybe Polich. That's what. Yeah, Polich. Yeah, Polich. Yeah, Dave Polich did. Yeah, yeah. Dave Polich did as well. So yeah. I have no idea. I, I didn't really ever meet any of these guys, but like in person. But they did sounds for us. I, I don't know if they remember me, but uh, Dr. Okay. Manny Fernandez, for those who don't know, was the guru, the master of Yamaha FM in the back in the SY seventy seven, SY ninety nine days. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a legend in our eyes, and he's he's done some amazing stuff for us. If you if you haven't seen it already we've got um a wonderful yamaha vp1 show that we did where because manny was restoring reinhold heil's uh vp1 there you go guys there's a sense that you should model i'd <laughs> love i would love you for all eternity um so yeah go and see that one uh because manny did some great work with that and of course the kodomo we did a show with the kodomo essence fm um so yeah we've got him and we, we, maybe we'll get him to do something with um third wave because he's really digging into that um we've had a donation and a request uh from dr mike metley in the chat let's just throw this up on screen uh mention the music player network gx80 review so yeah for 20 bucks i'll do anything um so music met uh, sorry music metley uh music player network is a forum um over dave bryce runs it uh, mpn and what they've been doing since gx80 came out is they've kind of got this ongoing thread where a lot of the guys there are you know leaving their thoughts and opinions and discussing techniques and all sorts of things so if you don't know it already um the music player network go and just just google music player network you'll find it uh, you do need to sign up but it is free um so it's, it's absolutely um user friendly go in there and then uh look out for the 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 test lab uh board and then you can join in that one and learn some more uh, about that um paul r toller in the chat wants to know any plans for ios i think we always ask somebody always asks you this still it no plans for iOS. mike metley is not the one asking that this time <laughs> um, no current plans for ios but uh but mike and i uh met at synthplex and mm-hmm. we're due to have a chat one of these days and uh 
like to hear him out and see what he has to say about it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to speak just for a moment about the music player uh, gear test as well, because this is this is one of those wonderful things that happens when you go to a convention like Synthplex and everyone shows up and you get to meet everyone that you've only ever emailed or talked to before. Um, I was uh, I met uh, David Bryce at the show and it turns out he's he's been a, a big fan of Cherry Audio and, and of a number of our instruments, which was really cool. Um, and I ended up setting him and Craig Anderton up with GX80, sort of telling them what we were working on at the time. And uh, they both seem to fall in love with it. And this whole um, review, multi-author review gear test thread mm. that they've done on Music Player Network is entirely David Bryce's creation and Craig Anderton's <laughs> creation. We have nothing to do with it uh, other than directing people to it because it's awesome. But basically, David Bryce got Craig Anderton and Jerry Kavorsky and Stephen Fortner and Dr. Mike Metley uh, to all review the software and write up hints and tips. And this is an ongoing discussion. Uh, we are there from Cherry Audio answering questions that anyone has. So if anyone watching this wants to continue to interact with us or ask more questions about GX80 after this chat, um, musicplayer.com uh, in their, uh, what do they call it? Their gear lab, their MPN gear lab That's for it. interactive reviews. It's, it's such a cool concept and it's so amazing that they did this again, entirely on their own independently just because they believed in, in this yeah. product. And that's awesome. It's kind of old school, isn't it? You know, using forums, but it's it's a, it has a degree of permanence about it because it's always there. It's not a fleeting thing like a video. Uh, you know, it's it's always there, and the information is easily you know searchable and and what have you. So, yeah, get yourselves over there. We actually gave each of them a ten dollar gift card to Shakey's Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, so, wow. That's I, a I just before before we say goodbye, um, I I, I want to bring in Kent um, because well, so Kent and I were we've been messing around with this and um, Kent had some frustrations because he, he wasn't able to get the aftertouch mm. working, um, and I'm it turns right out hardware. Yeah, it wasn't obviously it wasn't the software. It was it was something else was going on, and we were all trying to figure it out, and then. Yeah. Um, Steve Elbows, who I think is in the chat, um, suggested um, some settings changes on his Hydrosynth, and yeah. lo and behold, it all worked and everything. And I just wanted to ask you, Kent, because you know you said something that was, was quite telling about the CS80 that uh, without polyphonic aftertouch, it's it's really just any old synthesizer. It's the poly AT that really makes it become this very organic and, you know, sought after instrument. Yes, you can, well, it's achievable with the mono AT as well, mm. obviously. Um, um, yeah, the poly AT, it depends on the player and it depends on what they're playing as well. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, when I did, um, it's because it, it's a very personal thing. Like for instance, when I did Hans Zimmer's one, mm -hmm. he wanted the touch to be really light, um, so I had to calibrate it in such a way so it's like <laughs> really stupid light. You know, got to make sure no bees land on it or anything because it will set it <laughs> off. Um, and then of course get I get uh, other customers that want it to be hard, yeah, because they want to be able to um, use the velocity yes. more. And then they don't want to be triggering aftertouch when they're doing it, so then they have to like literally stand on the bloody keyboard before it aftertouches. <laughs> um, and it does, and it 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 makes each eighty a personal thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was really weird because I turned the MPE off and it still wouldn't work. And it turned out I needed to turn the MPE setting for the expression pedal off. Wow! Yeah, I was like, why? I mean, the expression pedal wasn't even involved in what I was doing at the time, anyway. Yeah. Once that turned off, poly AT. Yeah. yeah. Who and knows? Who knows? Yeah, and to say all of a sudden it sort of came to life really in your hands because 
you know what you're looking for you know what uh you know what yeah. settings do what and everything so it's um i tell you what i would have liked um mm. gx80 to have but of course you couldn't you couldn't put this in because you might not know it exists uh which is um the dynamic unison um which is a voice sharer so if you hit one note you get 16 vcos you hit two notes you get eight and so forth so forth uh, like a jupiter like four a jupiter four like a ah. jupiter four right and um, so i i made up this unit called the dynamic unison for uh cs80s I've, I've done about 300 or so of them i think mm -hmm. um and it you, you get that sort of um real uh um, sort of like show off bottom C yeah. where you get all 16 kicking together and it's like holy crap you know, you're in Moog territory you know mm. big Moog modular territory yeah. Um, but yeah I mean other than that yeah it's lovely I love it I, I really I'm really enjoying it Cause be, before I was banging my head against the screen because mm -hmm. I was going do poly AD <laughs> bastard <laughs> and it wouldn't and it was like <laughs> Cause, yeah, because there you were with your big hydrosynth deluxe <laughs> and not getting yeah. it. And I'm I'm here with my little uh, micro freak. And I'm saying, oh yeah, I can do it. And just, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, even the uh, even the the rise, yeah, um, is is good. With, and I think, yeah, whatever, girl, steady. <laughs> um, and even the the Roly Grands will do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's nice now because if if I if I'm using the eighty. As well, which is hidden in the corner. Yeah, why do people tried... hide their CS80s? Well, it's, it's not a question of hiding; it's a question of uh, it's sinking into the floor. <laughs> right. it's, it's, be <laughs> it's become one. Yeah, and because everywhere, I mean, there's two in the front room, and it's like everywhere you go, there's CS80s. Mm. Two in the workshop, Poor guy. in the shed. Yeah, it's like, terrible oh, life. These people keep sending me these bloody things, but there you go. <laughs> um, and yeah, and you got, and they all sound just slightly different but at least with software ones you can hone in to get it to do exactly what you want it to do mm -hmm. for what you're doing whereas the 80 unless you're confident you want to undo the two big screws open it up and adjust it which is going to take an hour and you're probably going to forget what it was you wanted to play yeah um so th that's what you know where software like this really 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 comes into its own yeah absolutely and it, the way you can configure it to work with whatever your hardware is because yeah. the that um, last note aftertouch is fucking genius yeah it, is. it really is it's yeah. like okay, wow i can use that on any you know like a, a controller like a the ni controllers that can only do, you know have mono aftertouch and now suddenly oh, hey, look you got yeah really works love it yeah it's a clever thing very yeah. clever thing um yeah just a few other th uh, comments that I just wanted to highlight if my thing would work. There we go. Right. Uh, so uh, we've done that one. We've done that one. Oh, yeah. So Kent. Um, yes. Ken, who would have been a Kent, but uh, they missed it off of the birth certificate. Um, it says, always feel free to shoot me a message uh, via the support um, in terms of the hydrosynth and that issue you had, because maybe it's something with the hardware, maybe it's something with the software that's not communicating. So, um, yeah, it might, it might, Ken's it might your guy for, for ASM. And also, uh, he says, also remember, Hydrosynth Explorer works nicely as a poly aftertouch controller. Shill, shill, shill. Of course, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Um, so, yeah. Um, and then Thypol Sandra, who's in the chat. Welcome, sir. Um, didn't Eddie Jobson have a Unison Mode mod on his CS80? I, I don't know. I'm not. A... Can I can I feel that real quick? Go for it. Um, I don't know if he did. I don't know. But actually, Dan should be feeling this. Dan's CS80 uh, has... Dan, it's a factory mod, right? With the voice buttons. That's my understanding. That yeah. The guy who originally owned my CS80 worked for Yamaha. And he had a a mod put in with a, a unison mode, a four-voice mode, and a two-voice mode. Oh, I've had that one here. So, really? yeah. Yeah, I've had that one here. And in fact, the, the big, the big, big square orange buttons, buttons yeah. the big orange light up buttons yeah. in GX80 yeah. that are used for voice assign and number of voices and the layer modes, that's modeled after these uh, orange buttons that are part of yeah, my... Yeah, I just copied um, Dan's. I, we had pictures that I just, yeah, well, I just saw yeah. it. I copied those, that button style and figured it would be authentic. But if you see Dan's, like where the number of voices are on GX80, it looks exactly like Dan's yeah. real CS80. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Awesome stuff. That's cool. Brilliant. 
Well, guys, um, it's just been absolutely great, as it always is, to have you on to tell us about your, your new, newest toys. Um, if people want to go, uh, I think Andy put the, the link in the chat. It will appear down below also, but it's cherryaudio.com um, to go and learn all about GX80. Um, also to learn about SynthStack 3. Try saying that after a few... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that's available now and if you own a bunch of cherry audio stuff which i know a lot of people do because it's such, such great value for money you'll get a superb discount on on all of that as well um james it's been great to have you on for the first time please yeah, do you. come back again um we'll keep in touch i think i think we're, we're connected on facebook now as well so yeah i have um, like this um melbourne instruments behind me um mm -hmm. i'll send you an email i've been i just started working with those guys and oh, i think please do yeah. that yeah fantastic yeah please shoot nice. me an email Brilliant. But great to meet you, and um, congratulations on some amazing sounds and assembling a, a fantastic team. Can I say one thing? Of course. Um, I can't list because I'll forget and screw it up. I can't list every sound designer, but I would just like to thank every sound designer and Houston Singletary especially for helping me uh, recruit a lot of these guys. And nice. um, I mean, I could spend a whole talk on just the sound design team. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, we know James Dyson here as well. He, yeah, he's a regular. Dyson, he's been great. I, yeah. And the, I'm. They're kind of like family now. I'm. They all have a different role, and uh, I've become great friends um, cool. with all of them. And that's the great so thing thanks. about this community, isn't it? It always ends up with people making really good friends. So Mike yeah. Martin of Casio. I mean, mm -hmm. it's amazing yeah. people get to do this and still work other jobs. I think it's yeah. incredible. I have the whole list right here, James, if you want. <laughs> Read it off. <laughs> I put them in the vi oh, I put, I put them all in the video. It's uh, well, James, uh, Drew Schlesinger, uh, Mike Martin, Julie Catherine, Houston Singletary, uh, Matias Simovich. I hope I'm saying that right. Matia. Matia, thank you. Yeah. Uh, James Dyson, uh, Catherine Fountain does really cool atmospheric stuff. Uh, yeah. Derek Atwater, uh, Christian Matthew Cullen, uh, David Polich, who's uh, does amazing vintage mm. stuff, uh, and Jordan Passmore. Nice. And so thank you very much to everybody. An amazing job. Mm. Right there, Bill, <laughs> Brilliant stuff. In, um, the, in the spirit of, of Thanksgiving, because it's the Thanksgiving yeah. holiday uh, here, I'd like to, if I can, if I can just take a moment. Of um, course. First, I'd like to thank uh, the two of you, Rob and Kent. Uh, I, I think you've had us on three or four times. Mm-hmm and uh it's really fun and we appreciate your support and and it's really fun to come and talk about these products um i'd like to very much thank mitchell and james on either side of me uh for all the work that they've done this year and throughout the history of cherry audio to get us to where we are and to get the gx80 out again it was a monumental effort um i'd like to thank everyone at cherry audio because you know, we get to come on the show, but there's a bunch of us that there, there's our QA department, our support department, our art team, um, our management team, our sales team, and and Robert, our marketing department that's on the chat yeah. right now. And who uh, did the and everyone 3D that, sliders? That, what? <laughs> and who did the 3D sliders? Oh, that's the 3D yeah, sliders. and, and <laughs> well, Alan's video, you know, hand drawn that whole comic. It was beautiful you know our teaser video yeah. i mean the amount of talent and uh, just everyone that came together to make not only gx80 but all of our products this year i'm incredibly thankful for mm -hmm. and uh and then the music player network and mike metley and craig anderson and david bryce and everyone that's been supportive throughout this release and then all of our just all of our customers we love you guys thank you so much for sending us your uh the the sense that you'd like us to make and your feedback and and your praise and your criticism on everything we do it it drives us to be to be better and uh and i i very much hope gx80 is the synth that we've hyped it up to be because we're extremely proud of it yeah absolutely well, uh, well done well done it's, it's great. Well done. um mitchell do you want to have, uh, have a last word at all Oh boy, uh, I think Dan kind of covered it. Uh, cool. We're you know, very lucky and happy that we made it to the finish line and got a product out that we're really, really happy with and we're just thrilled that, with the response. We really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. Well, gentlemen, um, you and your team have done amazing work again. Um, please do come back uh, soon. Um, we're, we're always happy to have you guys on. Our audience loves you. We love you. So uh, thank you from, from us to you and enjoy 
the rest of your Thanksgiving weekend. I hope uh, whatever you whatever it is you decide to do, it's fantastic. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon. And if we don't see you before, have a great Christmas and a new year and um, a, an even more successful 2023. Thank Cherry you. Audio, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Happy holidays to all of you. We'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Ken. Bye-bye. Thank you. And we'll just pop them out one by one by one. And there we go. Ta-da. Thank you ever so much, Cherry Audio, uh, for coming along. Uh, as always, amazing guests, um, <coughs> making great things, great for the community. Um, and, yes, we'll, we'll have them back as soon as they want to come in um for you know the next product or the next thing that they do or just if they just want to hang out for a chat that will be amazing right now i have a dilemma here because <laughs> i've been drinking uh this because i'm a bit thirsty today they say when you get older apparently who is this was telling me this i think it was in one of your shows that your uh as you get older your the the thing that tells you you're getting thirsty stops working yes it isn't uh, as efficient then, as it then i must be, be quite young because I feel really thirsty. Oh. But the problem is I've drunk uh, over a pint and a half of um, weak diluted orange squash. And I really need to loop. So I'm <laughs> going to try and find a promo video for a product that I can stick on for a couple of minutes. But anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, <laughs> if, if you hear a trickling sound, it's probably me. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, so, yeah, if you want to uh, invest in Cherry Audio products, because why wouldn't you? CherryAudio.com is the website. You can go and find out all about them. Watch the promo videos, read all about it, and then, of course, go and, and buy some stuff. And SynthStack 3, I mean, on its own is incredible value, but they just knock amounts off for every uh, Cherry Audio synth that you already own. Um, and so you get it for a ridiculously cheap price. I mean, it's yeah. just it's crazy. And, of course, um, if you, uh, as, as Wagyu said, if you go to Plugin Boutique, um buy something you get ca2600 which is great in itself but you get that for free register it on your cherry audio account and that comes off the price of synth stack as well so it's an even better way of getting it uh, really cheap um so we've got some news we've got about uh, 40 odd minutes there's not a huge amount it's kind of getting to that time of year when there's little spurts uh, or oh, i shouldn't have said that because it makes no, me you shouldn't it, well, yeah. really really i'll tell you what if you really really need to go I yeah fill you can fill. I'll, okay. I'll, go, I'll go and play some live CS80 or something. What, 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 well, either that or maybe some GX80 even with, with all of the yeah, stuff well, yeah, that you've got I think there. It's, yeah, it's here. There we go. We've, we've got to be careful with copyright strikes, though, because... No, I'm not saying, right. yeah. I, I, I'll you can make some... I'll, I'll make... What's it? What's that expression? Make shit up as I go along. That's the one. Okay, well, you, you, if you want to entertain... Yeah. You know, you'd be the, you know, the, the bar piano player for a couple of minutes... <laughs> I'll turn my microphone off because you don't want to hear that. Oh, and then, then I'll be more comfortable to do the news. You see. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kent Spong. <laughs> oh, my God. Here we go. Quick. Oh. Find a working mouse. God's sake. There we go. Right. Let's get some... How long does it take to have a pee? Yeah, let's put let's try some guitar one or two here. Mm. 
Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no. <laughs> so close to like, good night, everybody. Yeah, it's a little bit of a copyright strike there, do we? Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, blimey. Blimey. I did wash my hands, by the way. Uh, <laughs> good, good. <sighs> oh, that's better. Oh, good, man. I, I hate because you always feel on edge, don't you? Right, okay. Let's is do Mitchell some. Watching this still? Sorry, is Mitchell here? Still he here? might be. I think he's lurking. Yes, he's nodding his head in the background. There, you can't see him, but we can. Um, he enjoys the show so much. Um, right. So, uh, let's see what have we got? Well, there are some interesting things to talk about. The little bit of a surprise. Uh, nobody saw. We're going to start. <laughs> let's do let's do the proverbial poop sandwich. Okay, we started off with some great cherry audio stuff, and we'll end on some really good stuff. But this one, all right, oh, okay. um, this has got me confused because we didn't see this coming, and it came completely out of the blue. Once it arrived and we saw it, I was like, oh, maybe we do we really do we really need this? Is it really worth the money they're asking? Let's find out. This is Korg Collection 4. So yeah, um, Korg updated their Korg collection to version 4, and in doing so, um, introduced, let me get rid of that, there mm. we go, introduced three new instruments. Well, two instruments, or maybe one instrument, a drum machine, and an effects unit. And they were, as and, and I know Ty echoed this yesterday, I... If you were to draw up a list of everything you wanted Korg to add to the Korg collection, mm -hmm. these three things would have probably been at the very bottom of most people's lists, I think. So it begs the question, why? Really odd. Well, there's a timing thing going on, isn't there, as well? Because mm. when it comes to recreating instruments in software, you either want stuff that's not available anymore and hasn't been for 30 million years. <laughs> yeah. Or you'd love to have it right now. So, like, oh, oh you know, if they did a third wave plug-in. Mm. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then there's a, there's, and then there's a time where it's not needed because the hardware is pretty much around and freely available everywhere. Mm. Um, you know, go on eBay. Oh, I can buy all these things. You know, blah blah. So, uh, if you were into this stuff, wouldn't you already have it already? Yeah. Is it, yeah, it seems to be. I'm not quite sure what it's aimed at. Who yeah. it is aimed at? Because the micro Korg is still available, as far as I'm aware, and I think there is a version of the Chaos Pad that's still available. I think it's the, th the third plus one, the billions of second hand ones and all the second hand ones are around all over and the place. um the electribe all right so the electribe does exist still although it's slightly different to what it used to be it's a you know it's a much more much more of a controller thing than it was yeah, yeah. you know this because what was it there was um 
There was an analog modeling synth electribe. There was the analog modeling drum machine, which is the one that's included here, the ER1. And then there was a sampling based one, I believe. I, I was never really into them. They didn't appeal to me as instruments. <clears throat> but um, I mean, the, the micro Korg is, uh, I know for a fact it's Korg's biggest selling instrument of all time. And I think it's actually up there as one of the best selling synthesizers of all time because it, you know, it represented compact portable big sounding lots of you know toys with it had a little vocoder as well um see them very often on stage with you know many different artists because it is it's just something you can just sling under your arm and makes a nice little thing uh but i just of all the things they could have put into here even if they wanted to do this i would have chosen two other things and then made this one you know the the poor relation that you know just to make up the numbers so to speak rather than these three things i mean i'm saying all of this but when this is the other thing when korg announced it they made, announced it very quietly there was no i didn't get any press releases mm. um there were no big you know nobody was shouting about it i think i just there wasn't even an email I think it was a social media post on either Twitter or Instagram. It might have been Instagram, actually. Yeah. And I was like, Core Collection 4? Haven't I got that? I wasn't sure whether that was the version I was on. So then I looked, and I thought, oh, no, it's it's an upgrade. And they've given me an upgrade code as well. So I just kind of, in a sleepy haze, just said, yeah, order. And then went to look what I got for my order. And look, to be fair, they did update a whole bunch of the existing stuff um, to latest versions. So I'm guessing they're adding in or making sure M1 compatibility and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, Synthetic says in, in the chat, you know, the um, the Electribe is a tactile thing. But the Chaos Pad is supremely tactile. It has this big pad that you put your finger on and do crazy stuff with now you're doing it with a mouse or a trackpad at best i mean i can understand it in the ios form and there is the i i chaos i chaosolator which is kind of a a version you can't say that after two bottles of italian tea well no quite that since act three blimey um <laughs> but you know the Korg have got a good reputation in terms of iOS uh, instruments. Mm -hmm. And I can understand yeah. the Elect... I mean, I've, I, I bought the Electribe, and then there was the Gorillas version of the Electribe. Uh, I've got two or three Electribe apps on my iPad, along with the Poly 6 and the IMS 20 and a couple of others. And they're all quite good. And the Chaos Pad and the Electribe make sense, certainly make more sense with um, with iOS than they do on a desktop. I mean, Ken, Ken Pierce has just said he's got a, a trackpad. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I use you know the, the Apple trackpad. And so it's, you know, that does kind of give me a similar experience. Yeah, but, but is it because of the instruments they've modelled? Or is it because it isn't a PS3300 or uh, and a, I don't know, the Delta mm. a, and a Quadra, you know, kind of thing? Yeah. You know, sort of like, oh, yeah, I'd like, like to get my hands on some of them, you know. And maybe they're, maybe they're looking at the core collection and thinking, well, look, we've got all this, like, vintage digital stuff, you know, uh, vintage analog stuff as well. Mm. Now maybe we need to appeal to a slightly younger um, demographic and bring in you know some of those i don't know i'd love to know what korg were thinking or what they were smoking um because i'd have some of that it's an, it's an interesting thing they've made some questionable decisions this year um in terms of their stuff i don't i don't know if it's a massively bad decision what they've no, done it's just um, odd yeah m maybe a bit of a balance of mm. you know be a, yeah a bit more of like okay you can have these very digital modern things you're tripping over them all everywhere yeah and and something else that's like Ooh, you know that doesn't come up every day of the week yeah it's well, yeah. No. well there you go look if you want to get core collection for it's available now um and everything's discounted obviously it's that time of year and i think you can buy the whole collection if you've never bought anything of theirs before you can buy the whole thing for 299 
and you're getting some great you know some really great instruments in there yeah m1 wave station ms20 poly 6 uh monopoly um prophecy 700 um FF, just the other the mini Korg 700 um you got the triton stuff in there as well you know there's a huge amount of content in there lots of you know good value for money and now you've got the you know these other things so there's there's a slight diversity to the collection but Korg have always had some odd pricing and certainly odd upgrade paths as well i, I think i've told this story countless times where i got a bigger discount on buying Korg collection because I had a free copy of the M1 Lite edition than I did when I when they factored in the um, the individual instrument apps of Korgs that I had bought before actually buying the collection. So I pick up a keyboard that came with um, M1 LE, and all of a sudden my discount on the the thing was much bigger than than it was when all I had was the Wave Station and the M1, which I'd paid full price for. Oh. Very odd, very odd. But there you go. I must admit, I I have just noticed that I um, wondered why Korg hadn't modelled the Quadra. Uh, I I must admit, they in, my, in my in my own defence, <laughs> I did headbutt that Mustang very hard. <laughs> just I didn't I, I didn't want to say anything because you know you're, yeah, you're considerably but, more learned than I. Pfft, and I yeah, thought clearly. maybe there was a rare rare Korg instrument called Quadra, yeah. but yeah, there was the, the Delta and the Lambda, yeah. wasn't there? And, the Delta. Uh, I love. I actually loved the Lambda. Mm. I had a Lambda, it was quite nice, I loved it. Yeah, I had um, a Lada. But why they would be doing a Quadra, I don't know. No. <laughs> Unless they um, are still smoking the same stuff. I mean, I think if you were to do a poll, um, and I'm, I'm just assuming here, I, I, I think I'd be, you know, my money would be safe in saying that I think most people would want uh, a PS 31, 32, 33, 100, more than pretty much anything else in there repertoire that hasn't already been done mm. so i think those are the ones that most people would lust after um even stuff like the the dual voice you know the 800 um and the 770 even you know there's they yeah. they have a rich seam to mine um yeah. they've just seemed to have just only gone for a shallow dig this time and not not the deep stuff but yeah. fingers crossed you never know anyway that's Korg Korg collection four it's out now Full price is normally three nine nine, currently two nine nine. Uh, if you already already own some of their stuff, you also get a slightly bigger discount uh, as well. Um, now, some of you might remember, uh, certainly if you watch Kent's show um, yeah. over the, the yeah show over the, uh, the the last few months, is that at some point, yeah, we've sort of whipped out our strings, uh, string sample libraries or string instruments and noodled with them and one of the ones that i bring out sometimes because it kind of makes me sound better than i actually am um is the harmonics bohemian violin mm. which is an exceptionally brilliantly coded piece of sample based uh instrumentation they've only now gone and done a bleeding cello it's been oh. it's been some time in the offing, and I'm sorry, Kent, but you know more money. Yeah, it's currently reduced as well down to 149 euros from 229. Oh, that's not bad actually. Yeah, and well, let me just I've, I brought up the what I should have done is bring up the um, the demonstration because mm. the the sampling is incredibly deep. There's over 70,000 samples with extensively captured true legatos and articulations of all manner uh, and variety you it's something like 26 gigabytes in size um but the, the genius with the via harmonic stuff is um the scripting and Scripted the way articulation is off yeah the, the artic yeah. it's just unbelievably good so uh somewhere in here i have a video demo here we go let's stick this up on the screen and hit play Thank you. 
it's it's just i mean it's, it's amazing um is all i can say and it's one of those things that you have to play it to really believe how mm. good it is because it just it makes the the most ham-fisted thick-fingered talentless keyboard players like myself actually sound quite good when i can string a few notes together because the articulations in you know in instruments like this are all important to the authenticity of the sound absolutely yeah. and it just makes you sound good yeah unbelievably good um i love the violin i think it's amazing and you know the the fact that the um the plug in itself has let's just bring that back to so yeah, basically at the top of the screen, you can ha you can choose from different kinds of styles of playing. So there's emotive, assertive, classical, and sprightly, and then yeah. improv. And they all just change the dynamics ever so slightly. But um, what it's what the script is doing is it's analyzing ex exactly what you play in terms of velocity after touch, um, whether you're you know whether you're playing legato what. Span yeah it knows it knows what notes you've played and what your fingers are on at the moment and then what to do if you play this note or that note it will then behave the same way as a uh, as a real cellist or violinist yeah. in the case of the other one it's Just swapping well. in and out different sample articulations yeah. depending on what it is you're playing to keep it within the realm of realism to the to the mm. best of you know your ability i mean ty will attest to this that the other way to do it is you play it and you have to know how to play a mm -hmm. cello and how the bow would be reacting and manually loading the sample yes. to each midi note mm -hmm. whereas this is like a little um supercomputer in the background going he wants this one he wants that one he wants it now this yeah. one that one that one, that one. Yeah. to keep that level of realism up that's it they've um they started off using uh uvi's platform and they've now moved on um the the, uh, the violin was the first one to go to their own um uh, well it's not their own engine they they i think it's uh, i think it's called gorilla i think <laughs> it's which an odd name but uh, it's the gorilla engine that they're using that is allowing them to now just really go for it i mean the uvi stuff was great um but the this stuff is even better and it's but if you just have contact a, seven you can add it to that anyway oh yes of course if yeah. you want to you know the one-stop shop if you yeah if you're a massive yeah. contact user but i yeah it's it's mind-blowing stuff and and i know that andre uh who's like uh one of the guys at the company um has been really pushing to get this done but he didn't want to put it out until it was absolutely ready and there was, you know, it was a bit like a company we're going to talk about very shortly, um, where they definitely didn't want to put out anything that wasn't up to scratch, and so they delayed and delayed and delayed, and they finally, you know, got it, and they're happy with yeah. it now. So it's available now. Uh, it's 149 euro, uh, which is discounted at the moment from 229, which is the full price, um, and you can get it. On, let me write the page viaharmonic.com so just viarharmonic.com and you can get bohemian cello and there's also the bohemian violin as well there's plenty of demos on there but i think uh and it, or if you already own uh bohemian cello from you know the previous versions it's a free upgrade so even oh, even nice. if it's the uvi one i think yeah it's a free upgrade so yeah amazing stuff well uh, as, as a, sn a side note to that um, if you, you're looking for some decent string chords type pad sounds to go mm -hmm. with that, um, that really tone, uh, um, okay, sunset yeah, and, um, oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> sunset and, uh, well, uh, there's only really, the, there's only the two there, but mm -hmm. it, I think one is, um, either sunrise and the other one's some, like sunset or something like that. Okay. And they are very, very lush. I think now I think they're doing a black, black Friday thing on that. As okay. Well. Yeah. I mean, everyone I think is. A, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think the two are like two ninety or something mm -hmm. together, as opposed to practically nearly being that each. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah there's some good bargains to be had out there. And uh, <laughs> Fiona's in the chat. 
<laughs> Shall I put your dinner on now? Shall she? Yes, please. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there is a black friday sale on there um and so and the reductions are down to 149 each um there are also uh some freebies available there's a violin freebie and a cello freebie if you want to kind of give them a try and just you know but trust me these are great if i could recommend you know if i was into that you know people would you know take my uh my word for something trust me you will not be disappointed by by yeah. either of those at all. Yeah. There you go. Via Harmonic, um, Bohemian Cello, uh, the new one is out now. Right. Uh, let's see. I was going to talk about, I was going to mention uh, the, a new drum library for um, Superior Drummer 3. Mm. But when I looked at it, it was just like, oh, yawn. Uh, I'm sorry, but. Um, there's, there's this new one called Area 33, and it's basically a very, uh, like a, a metal drum kit. They really do like their metal kits. I guess it's the the Scandinavian thing. I don't know, um, but it's out now. It's 165 euros. It's called Area 33, and they reckon it's their biggest kind of best monster metal kit. Um, seven right. unique drum kits, 13 snares, 14 kicks. Um, 42 toms, three hi hats, over 40 cymbals. Yeah, I mean, it's, the quality is undoubtable, but I, it's a bit boring. Um, so there we go, uh, if you want that. They've also got some Black Friday deals on. And as ever, the stuff they put on sale is the worst, not the worst stuff, but the stuff that nobody really wants. Like uh, the Hugh Padgham stuff not on sale. The uh, the Hansa Studio stuff is not on sale. None of, that's, that, none of that good stuff ever gets discounted. But there you go. Yeah. each to their own right um so we've done core collection well that just leaves us with a couple of things from uh, one company who i guess for the next seven days we're going to be slightly um overrun uh with this stuff so the first thing um that i want to mention of theirs, which was a complete surprise to lots of people um let me just call up the video here um, so this is Sonicware, a Japanese company who have a, um, a you know, built up a reputation over the last few years for their Liven range of boxes. And we've already had 8-bit warps, uh, we've had XFM, we've had ba Beats and Bass, or Bass and Beats, I can't remember, Boots and Cats and Bass and Boots and, and Pants. And, <laughs> boots and Pants, yeah. Um, bass and Beats. And um, everyone was waiting for something else, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And then all of a sudden, they announce and release a new item uh, in the Liven range, which is the Liven Lo-Fi 12. Let's have a listen. This is uh, Sonic Wears Live and Lo-Fi 12. Um, here it is, folks. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Um, and it is a cracking little box. Um, battery powered or mains powered, so you have the option. It can be completely portable. Uh, six, trip, uh, six double A's in there. Got a built-in speaker, which you can turn off if you don't need to uh, annoy people in the park. Um, line in, line out, headphones, MIDI, sync in, sync out, and it has the the same live and interface. Um, although I have to say that I've got the live and XFM, and it really messed with my head. Um, this UI has been, you know, it's greatly simplified. I guess because sampling is a bit more 
easy to get your head around than um, an extended FM. But you also do get the, the little overlay that sits on top. So this, this is for when you're doing your sample editing. And then once you've finished editing your samples and you, ne you now want to sequence them, you just use that. And it, it sounds amazing. Um, the sampling engine in it is 16-bit that samples are either 12 or 24 kilohertz, which will then give you uh, four or two seconds uh, of sampling time, respectively. And it has a 12-bit mode. And it really is... I've not been able to take my hands off it. it, it it's just so satisfying because um, it, it's so old school. No multi-sampling. One sample stretched across the whole keyboard. If you want to, um, you know, match you know, the tempo of the machine to your sample, you've got to either figure out what the BPM is of the sample and then, you know, dial that in or you have to just do it by ear, which is great. If you want to get the sample, sample start and end points, it's all done just by this two knobs, you know, very kind of Akai 612 type, type thing. Mm. Um, and you just dial it in until it sounds right. I even found out today that even though it doesn't have a dedicated time stretching mode, it time stretches in the old school way. Um, so what, what you actually do is you take your, your loop, so you sample a loop in there, and what you do is you assign that loop to every step on the sequencer. So uh, when you play it, it starts the, sam the same sample on every step. But then what you do is you go into the second step, and you have to do a little bit of math here. You go to the second step and change the start point to a little bit further down the sample, and so on and so forth. So that eventually, when you play that sequence, it sounds just like the loop, the single loop itself. Now you've got it chopped up across 16 steps. You can then start to mess around with the BPM and the pitch, and it all stays in time, and it's brilliant. So it's old school, really, really old school. Oh, brave new world. I know. It's, it's bizarre, isn't it? Because I spent 25 years trying to make my sampling as clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and as and as dynamic <laughs> as humanly possible. Yeah. And then you hear the old sample stuff back and you go, Oh oh like that again. Isn't it weird? Yeah. I mean I you know, I I love old school sampling because it's you know, it's hands on and or ears on. I mean I don't like the as soon as you started to edit stuff on screen, it's kind of lost the the joy of of just like sampling stuff. And what I really love, and I guess it's one of the reasons I'm a big you know Fairlight fan, is that when you sample something into a Fairlight, uh, certainly Series One, Series Two, or something like this, or an old Akai or an old Emu, that what you sample comes out sounding somewhat like what you put in, but it's different. It has a character. It has something about it that's, you know, a je ne sais quoi that's been introduced through that degradation, and it just it, becomes I something think, really. I think it applies to everything. There's always something that gets lost when you advance. Yeah, it's always something that gets lost that you, yeah. you look well, back on with, you know, with um, affection. Yeah, and there is an element of nostalgia. I'll, I'll grant you that, um, but also. You know, it's, it's like records, isn't it? Vinyl. You know, we all loved vinyl yeah. records, and then you know, CDs came out, and we're like, "Wow, these these sound amazing." But what what did we lose? You know, we lost some of that. You know, crinkling, crackling in the background. We also lost decent sized sleeves and decent sized sleeve notes. And then we went to MP3s. And then we lost the whole physicality. So we're improving stuff, but we're also losing stuff, and that definitely happened happened with sampling. Because it came in, and because of the limitations of the technology of the day, it couldn't be perfect. As soon as it got perfect, everybody wanted to get perfect. Then it got perfect, and everything was crystal clear and pristine, 16-bit, 44.1, and then above. And it then just kind of loses its character, doesn't it? It loses its what made it unique. So little boxes like this, um, which retail for about, I think the street price of this is around 260 270 UK. Um, might be a little bit more in the US, a little cheaper in, in Europe. I can't, I don't, the prices haven't really sort of settled down. The, I think the RRP is 319 yeah. And then I think, I know Toman is selling it for about 284 I think. So it's around that. I was but quite impressed with the uh, collection of samples it came with to get you going. Yeah, yeah. You know? 
it's, there's yeah and it's got um there's eight banks each bank has 16 slots for samples so you have you can have up to 128 samples in this machine um it's 10 note polyphonic so plenty of room for for you know fairly dense stuff mm. and yeah i mean it's just I've, lots of videos have been popping up over the last few days as you know uh, people like myself who've been lucky enough to get one of these in advance have been doing stuff and it's great to see people with you know an old crappy record player just sampling a breakbeat into a sampler and then just messing around with it when i first heard it i thought oh this this kind of has an sp1200 vibe to it no it's nowhere near i guess as powerful as as one of those mm. but it has that kind of vibe to it and then somebody said oh what about the uh is it nsonic as10 so yeah i think it's the as10 that was a, a kind of a Ken. I'm sure Ken Pierce will put me right on that because that's his neck of the woods. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it has something about, and I, I will mention this in just a moment. But you know, I, I think I said to you guys ages ago that I, what I really wish somebody would do is come up with a like a handheld or you know, not pocket size, but you know, backpack size um, uh, unit and uh something that would reintroduce people to the, the real basics of sampling because now you can buy you know 26 gigabyte libraries of sheer perfection mm. whereas this stuff is just like you know very rudimentary you just get this and it's brilliant ken says there's no no he says he reckons this is probably more powerful than sp1200 uh, yeah oh, fair enough i'll take your word for it i've not got a huge amount of experience i would love to hear one of these uh, up against something like an s2400 which of course does a huge amount more but it'd be interesting to see uh to compare the low fi-ishness no nobody's things. sending you one Damn. come on brad you i know you watch i know you do come on i like the way it's pocket size but you do have to buy the special trousers well i guess quite yeah, yeah, but those big combat pants with the uh, yeah, well, with massive <coughs> pockets. We 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 talk about pocket size. Um, so that was the Lo-Fi Twelve. It's yeah. available to order now. The first one hundred sold out within a, a day or so. Um, the next run is is up and uh, is going to be up and running soon. Um, I know Wagyu mentioned it in the chat, but I got a message earlier today that you can now order these in Europe because I think the initial batch were us only now you can order them in europe through um i can't remember the name of the distributor but i'll pop it into the the notes below over the weekend mm. uh, but go to sonicware.jp for some some more information there and also just check them out on social media because they keep updating that with stuff so they they're available now but of course what we were all waiting for from sonicware um over the last few months mm. was the the thing that they promised us through a kickstarter campaign which was this little baby let's put this up uh. because it goes on for a little bit it's a great little demo video um but uh sample trek has, has suffered its own um delays over the last few months because they you know keep finding little bugs and they again they didn't want to release it until it was you know in a really good shape and it's here oh. it came it arrived today um and here it is this is the sonic wear sample trek which is 
I kind of knew it was small, but it 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 was small. It just feels a little smaller than I expected it to be, but it's still a really good size because it almost feels like, and certainly the controls make it look and feel like a video game. You know, you've got your D-pad and your OK you know, buttons here. Um, it does kind of sit in the hands really nicely. So from an ergonomics perspective, it's very good. Um, the only way, I mean, it's, I've only been playing this for like a couple of hours or so. The only way I can really describe it is it's almost like a hardware Ableton experience. So it's clips and scenes and you've got tracks. You've got up to 10 tracks that can either be drum tracks, loop tracks or MIDI tracks. And then there are also three global tracks that go the extent of the, your entire uh, project so they can be used for vocals if you want to just record a vocal track and you've got three of those. Mm. Unbeknownst to me at the time of ordering, this is also a USB audio interface, which is great because it has a little USB uh, uh, micro USB socket on there. I know Wagyu, sorry, micro USB. Um, the screen is quite small. So let me just see if I can stretch the power cable over here. Let me just turn this on so uh, you can get a good shot of that. There you go. So the screen is quite small, but it's 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 a very good resolution. So you can actually see it because the, it's yellow. It's not too hard on the eyes, especially in dark environments. So that's quite nice. Very colorful, lots of buttons and stuff. Very, very nice. Um, you do need to supply your own SD card, which sits in the side there. The nerve, um, the nerve indeed. <laughs> I mean, I think what's it seven quid for it? Like, I mean, that's a thirty-two gig one. It's just yeah. ridiculously cheap these days. Uh, again, can be battery powered. Uh, six double A's in the back. And notice, you know, some the eagle-eyed amongst you might notice, it's got a tripod mount in the back, Ooh. which is quite clever because you can put it on to, you know, you can get tripod to mic stand converters and just stick it somewhere or even just put it on a tripod if you're out and about like the guy was in the video there um yeah got the the built-in speaker as as per all sonicware stuff and you again you can disable that and just uh, you've got uh proper trs jacks in and out stereo you've got midi on the back there so you can control other stuff and communicate with it via a keyboard yeah i mean an all-round fantastic little thing and um, is shipping now so everyone that backed that is getting it at this moment and people I think Wagyu's just had his um, shipping notice lots of people are getting those um, so they'll be with you soon but some great stuff from Sonic were there any thoughts on this one I mean I know you haven't actually had, had a chance to have a look with that but you tempted at all uh, no, it's your sort of thing really is it? I don't know I think because I have an MPC X mm kind of um, being an agoraphobic I'm not going to carry one out into the park anyway so <laughs> although I'd, look, I'd really oh, no, have to get the big bloody sample your screams yeah, MC hammer trousers to take the MPC X out as a <laughs> pocket pocket interface <laughs> so um, um, yeah it looks great um, it's just I suppose it's that classic sort of yes but it's not for me mm. no no fair enough, yeah. Fair enough. But, like, yeah it looks yeah. brilliant actually. I mean I, I was tempted by I mean I bought the the Live and XFM mm. and was impressed enough by that. Although it baffled me a little bit, the the UI was a little bit difficult to get into. So when they came out with this and it actually got a properly detailed screen, because the Live ones only have like a four digit LED thing. Yeah. Um, I thought, oh, that's interesting. And then because I'd mentioned this before, you know, to you and Ben and, and the show about you know how wonderful would it be if somebody came up with a handheld unit that you could like just take out sample stuff and then make stuff with it and this is it it's almost like they were listening to me or um dr u endo who um uh, is the the owner of sonicware mm. um obviously shared that sentiment as well which is brilliant um but yeah so you can uh that they are taking orders the full price now i think the full price is going to be about 435 pounds roughly um mm. early back has gotten for a lot less yeah um, so it's I'm a shame everybody else can't. Yeah, exactly. But I've, you know, I was thinking under three hundred for it. To be honest, mm. well, when, and, you, uh, when you put it up with the um, lo-fi, yeah, I yeah. know it's a completely different thing. But there's something about that price range yeah. that's sort of like, yeah, buggy it, I'll go out and get one then. Yeah, but 
<coughs> get up into the fours and you start going mm, no. yeah thing is because they're they're a very small company and they're making small they can only sort of you know make small yeah. batches at a time you know based on their income i guess the more successful they they become they can do bigger runs and the bigger runs means you know less cost and that can be passed on um you know down the line to the to the consumer at the end yeah so you know we, we might see the price of these things you know start to come down a little bit more i i have a feeling that sample trek is going to be incredibly successful for them if they can make an, enough of them to sell in time but one question that i um have heard being asked around is especially because the the lo-fi 12 mm. and the sample trek both started kind of shipping you know within days of each other mm. There was like, you know, well, which one should I get? Because, you know, the Lo-Fi 12, yeah, I get the crunchiness. Apparently the sample trek has got a, like a 12-bit sampling mode in there, so you can do some kind of sort of sample destruction on there as well. What's, you know, what what's going to, what's the best thing for me? What am I, you know, going to do? Well, funny people should ask that because we've got a special show coming up. This is what I was referring to um, by being bit of a, a bit of a sonic wear week for for ProSynth network mm. we've managed not only to snag uh, a gentleman by the name of chris dodsworth who goes uh, under the name of chris lodi on youtube so if you check his channel it's full of great stuff um but he's all he also works with sonic wear so he does a lot of sound design for them and he does lots of beta testing and huge amounts of tutorial videos which are really really useful and he's already got stuff up about both of these things. We've managed to persuade him, A, to come on the show next week. So he'll be our live guest next Friday, where we'll be talking to him about Sonicware and, and other things that he does, because he's a you know musician in his own right. Yeah. But also, we've got this coming up, and this is going to be on Monday. So Monday the 28th of November at 8 p.m. UK time, 3 p.m. on the East Coast and 12 p.m. on the West Coast, we're going to do a Sonicware special, and Chris is going to join us. And essentially, the, the the way we see this going is that Chris will have his uh, sample track and Lo-Fi 12 set up, and I'll have have mine. He's the expert. I'm the amateur beginner, and so by him showing me how to do things, it'll a he'll teach me, and b maybe he'll answer a whole bunch of questions for people who are trying to. Um, get their heads around which you know maybe which one they should invest in so if you're if you're torn between the sample trek or the lo-fi 12 then do join us this coming monday at 8 p.m in the uk 3 p.m on the east coast 12 p.m on the west coast and we'll have an hour or two there's no real kind of definite end time so we'll have an hour or two of messing around with both of these boxes and um, showing you what they can do, and certainly Chris will be showing showing us what they can do, and trying out some stuff. And if you've been lucky enough to receive your sample trip before then, or even a Lo-Fi 12, bring it along and and learn with us. Uh, if not, of course the video will be available on catch up. So yeah, we've got um, we got Chris coming along as well. So it's going to be a, a, a Chris Dodds with Sonicware week on on. Uh, process that work do you think you'll be able to join us on monday um I, yeah i can be a spare wheel yeah well no, what i really need is somebody to look after like comments and cameras because i'm gonna have my head um so i don't know if ben can join us as well that'd be cool yeah. um but yeah anyone well, in give, the chat... give me a crash course in it and I'll, yeah I can, I can yeah moderate the chat simple enough stuff yeah um guys like loopop have already got their you know some of their great videos um mm out there already for some of these things so you know they're really good but what what we really wanted to try and do was do a um just like a live thing where people can ask questions like can it do this can it do that let's try this how does it work if you know like i think because i think i think jim is was jim glue was interested in the lo-fi 12 and he, he asked about time stretching and that was a fairly common question but it, it turns out you can do it in a fashion and it's quite a you know a neat little way of doing it. So um, yeah, we'll be able to answer all those questions. So there you go. Um, Sonicware sample track, Lo-Fi Lo Twelve, both uh, shipping as we speak and available now. And uh, 
I want to say big thanks to Chris for agreeing to come on and to Takahiro in Japan, who's their marketing guy for like facilitating all the connections and everything. So that's really cool. So thank you and congratulations to, to all for the great instruments. And that about wraps things up. That was a good little show, I think. Mm, mm, I think we're no. done. Yeah, I think we're Unless done. Unless anything, something else happened. No, I don't think so. If it does, we'll cover it next week. No, there you go. Um, anything planned for the weekend? Well, or Roly what? have now three days to deliver my rise to before it's officially late. Oh, yes, because what didn't they get? Did they get in touch with you and say something? Or mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and they, they said it will be the 28th at the absolute latest depending Ooh. and also depending on where you were in batch two right and um yeah well nothing's turned up yet mm. Mm. so and one of those days is a sunday so good luck well yeah you never know um i mean i yeah, that sample track should have been here yesterday mm-hmm and then all of a sudden, it's, it said, "Your shipment has been cancelled." I'm like, "No!" I, don't know. I honestly, I still to, to this day, FedEx didn't even uh, tell me what what happened, but yeah. it arrived today, so all is well. And then the tax bill, or literally, as soon as I accepted it at the door, like five minutes later, an email comes through saying, uh, "You owe sixty-two pounds." So I had to pay that. Mm. But it was nice to actually um, have a courier that prioritised the delivery of the thing and not hold it to ransom like some other uh, companies who I maybe shouldn't mention, but will. <coughs> <laughs> um, or oops. Should we, we just call them oops. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, so hopefully Rally Rise for you on Monday. Yeah, we'll see. They might do a Saturday delivery, you never know. Yeah, it's all possible, it's all possible. Although, yeah. you know, we've been bitten before, so... Yeah. So then you'll have three Rollies. Um, Four. Four? Oh, of course, yeah, you've got the small yeah. one as well, haven't you? You've got the block as well. So you'll have yeah. one for each hand, one for each foot? Yep. That'll be interesting. And then I'll get a fifth. Ah. Uh, uh. no, <laughs> no, not even going there. Not even It'll going be monophonic. There. <laughs> I'd be amazed if it was Polly. Um, so would I. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, can't play chords like that. <laughs> oh dear. Um, I this weekend I'm going to try and get familiar with these things. I need to sort of not come over as a complete novice, so I need to learn ah. some stuff on there. Mm. That's what. That's what, well. That in between that and picking up my Black Friday record store day purchases tomorrow, um, mm -hmm. and taking my daughter to work at stupid hours of the day. Um, oh, and I'm going to see uh, Billy No Mates um, tomorrow night in Norwich. And if you don't know who Billy No Mates is, check her out. Um, she is absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah I'm looking forward to going to see that and uh, yeah that's about it for me so thank you um, thank you sir for joining us um, thank you for your uh, eternal wisdom on all things CS80 of course and everything uh, else uh, <laughs> uh, oh man um, yeah go and enjoy your dinner yeah, I'm surprised we haven't heard heard the, the, the clarion call of it it's ready um, but enjoy it and um, have a great weekend. Don't forget, everyone, uh, we're not the only show on the internet. We're we're one of the newer no. ones. No, um, there have been people that have been doing this a lot longer and a lot better than us. So you've got Ramsey tomorrow, I believe, at 1 p.m. UK time. Yeah. I think then you've got uh, Jamie and Dom on the Sunday. Yeah. Uh, and then we're back on, on Monday mm. with mm. a special. So that that's a really good reason to, to hit that... Um, that like and subscribe button because then you'll get notifications of all of this stuff um where well, i did have there you go look i've got a big subscribe button there do that click the subscribe button and then you won't miss a thing mm. um but yeah we're back on monday and then of course you've got nick and maybe gaz on the wednesday as well and in between kent's 
show um, which comes up at random <laughs> intervals uh, throughout the week and it's always a great pleasure to be around. There might be one Saturday night actually. Oh, okay. It depends well, on who else is on. Yeah, I might, well, I might I might be able to join you uh, very late on once I got back from the gig. But mm. cool stuff. Brilliant. Well, look, thank you to everyone that's in the chat, whether you're there now, whether you were there before, or you're watching on Catch Up. Um, thank you so, so, so much. Um, oh, hang on a minute. Dina Perlman wants a plug. Um, quick, nip to the bathroom and cut one off the sink. Uh, no, where is? You got Here it is. Sink. Um, we will be having a Blue Mini special on December the 8th. Is that on oh. YouTube, Dina? Tell us in the chat if that's a YouTube thing, and then we'll make sure that we can stick it up onto the site oh andrew brooks is telling me that there is no jamie on sunday because he's tra oh of course there's nick um sonic states um emom from bath uh oh, which will be broadcast yeah, live uh yeah. tomorrow as well tomorrow evening. yes it is on youtube apparently. yes it is on youtube thank you dina yep so um december 8th blue mini special on the alan r perlman foundation youtube mm. channel go and check that out but yes also don't forget and the very first Sonic State Emom, uh, down in Bath, I believe our very own Jim Glue is performing there. I know Jamie is, or is, is Jim not performing? I know Jamie definitely, because he's first on. Um, but yeah, go for that. And um, mm. yeah, lots of stuff to do, lots of stuff going on. Brilliant. Bath Emom on Saturday. Saturday, yes. Okay. Oh, so I probably won't do a show tomorrow night. Then. Uh, okay, yeah, oh, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know how long it goes on for. Uh, but yeah oh Jim's not this one yeah so Jim sorry sorry Jim uh, Dom is on too as well apparently yeah. so yeah lots of acts have been booked uh, go and give them your support if you're in the Bath area go and give them the support I don't know if there's any tickets left uh, I don't know if Gaz is performing um, he might be not sure and we will see you same time, same place next mm. week with Chris Doddsworth. But, of course, Chris will be with us also on Monday for the live stream where we're going to be talking all things Sample Trek and Lo-Fi 12. So do join us for that. Um, and until then, uh, thank you ever so much for joining us. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, make sure you hit the like button underneath. Share us around. And we'll see you uh, on Monday and then again, of course, on Friday as well. So uh, take the greatest of care, everyone. You take care, mate. We'll see you soon. Ta-ta. Take care. Bye. Ooh, uh, Mrs. Oh, Mrs. Oh.